Hello, we are the heirs. And we are hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. Let's talk about Saturday night. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't there to see it, but I saw all the craziness that went on Twitter, on Instagram, everywhere. Awesome. Tell me about that sold out show at the Roxy. Oh my goodness. It was honestly like a dream. Just the whole night, everything down to the, the last detail of the flowers on stage. It was just honestly a dream come true to have a sold out show to begin with in yeah, Los Angeles. Absolutely was such a big deal to us and our fans were so loyal and they all showed up and were so beautiful and they had signs and it was just it was yeah. incredible honestly it was so unique i think i think what was so cool for us was you know we're we're a, we're a new band you know uh the airs like we don't we didn't have any music out up until friday so the fact that we could do a sold out show in la where all these kids were really coming to to see the music and to feel the vibe right. was something very important to us because it kind of gave us a glimpse of the future of once we have our music out and once people are following, you know, uh, what they can expect from our live shows. So it was kind of like the, the prequel to this, this story that we're about to uh, dive into. So yeah. and I think it was also crazy. People, I mean, the EP came out the day before our show. Right. And the whole audience knew all the words to every song <laughs> and including the songs that we haven't even released yet. Like they would just catch on and it was just like a big party with everyone it was just like a big hangout i don't know there was no wall between us and and the fans it right. was like we were all one yeah. which is our main very goal cool. so it was it was beautiful it was a great time so as you guys mentioned you're very excited for this show but what was so different about this show it was a sold out show uh from you guys performing at radio city music hall back in the day Absolutely. Well, it was all just growing experiences. You know, I think I think back then uh, we were still figuring out who we were as, as artists, as musicians and our characters as people as well. And so, you know, that all reflects on a stage performance in the end. It, it all that all reflects on how you perform, how you interact with people and the music mm -hmm. that you're performing and how it reaches people. And I think opposed to that time, this time we've really found out who we are as musicians and as as, as yeah. those characters that we live in this world as the heirs. And uh, it connected to the people in a different way. It's a more of a movie way more of an emotional and honest way and I think that that is what our overall goal is just to continue to be as honest with everyone as possible when it comes to performing okay and when you guys first did that audition for uh, America's Got Talent you guys performed your own song you guys were 13 and 15 years old yeah. and you guys already had something that you guys have written so have you guys always just been writing music yeah, I mean, yeah, once again, that was just a, such a great growing experience for us, and we've kind of progressed so much from then. Mm. Um, but yeah, we've we've been writing music since we were kids, kids, basically. I mean, he was, I was more of the outgoing performer type. I, I wanted to just get up on stage and yeah. get up anywhere I could to just sing for people, and he was more like in his room at night thinking about love and writing about love at mm, nine, yeah. ten years old. And so we kind of swapped sides a little bit he kind of taught me how to write and I kind of taught him how to perform but we've been writing ever since we were little I remember a distinct memory um sitting in my grandma's bathroom this one time and I think I was 10 or 11 years old and yeah. I was like I want to write a song so bad like I was so frustrated and, and we, we sat down with the notebooks yeah I remember what you're talking about we sat down in my grandma's bathroom like on the floor in in the shower just like sitting with the notebook like <laughs> like just coming up with ideas and, and we were like this is so good we were so excited but our writing process is so so much different now. It's such a mm -hmm. comfortable thing where, where we're right now we're going through similar things in our lives and teenagehood. You guys, you, we're constantly growing and progressing, yeah. and I think that it's so cool that we can relate and we can write about the same yeah. things and being on the same and collaborate. Yeah. yeah, on the same wa when you're on the same wavelengths with somebody when it comes to creating, you can just kind of go up to that person and be like, hey, like I want to make something, and they'll be on that same level with you, and, and it I'm makes like, it easier. I already started making something. You <laughs> yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's how we are with all the guys in the band too. It's it's very natural. We just kind of get together, uh, say we're feeling a specific way, and it all just pours out. So it's very very cohesive and natural. I would say. Now for when, sure. you when you start a project at such a young age and you already have you know a fan base behind you guys, how intimidating is it to transition to? the older style of music like right now it's different from what you guys did before yeah. honestly we were we were really nervous we we created such a beautiful fan base and we had so many amazing people that were following us and we were like what are we gonna do you know we're changing over we're changing as people we're changing as artists and it was so incredible that they were changing with us mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying when we, when we made this change they felt it and they were like we support you yeah. we love the concept we love everything and it was it was incredible i mean it was incredible they right. just they completely converted with us and yeah. i think a main the main reason why that happened was because we kind of grew up with our fans we're mm -hmm. all growing Absolutely. together they're yeah. teenagers or they're older but as and these they kids were the same age as yeah. us when we were beginning to start out you know doing what we were doing and yeah. they grew up 
age-wise and as characters with us along the way. So so as we matured, they matured, yeah. and so that was super cool. So it worked easily, and, and it flowed very well, and uh, now we are in this different part of our lives with you know a completely different with a completely different sound, and it, it was a very natural approach, and we are there now, and it just feels very, very good. And what is it about this sound that you guys wanted to, to move uh, towards rather than you know hip-hop or pop or anything else? Well, I think originally uh, we wanted to think outside of the box of what uh, of how pop music was perceived. You know, we, we see that, that right now you have these four walls, and that is what you can and cannot make in the pop world. And we basically wanted to take those walls and build within them, but expand on them so that you have different you have different things from different kinds of music and, and genre wise you have things from alternative rock and you have things from electronic you have things from hip hop mm -hmm. you have everything that we listen to basically combined into its own little thing you know in a little in a little pit you know mixed together that's that's kind of what we did and it wasn't like we were trying to make anything specific it was just kind of like let's make us for once you know let's create exactly how we hear our music in our heads and we sat down with our instruments and and with our electronics and we just kind of created that and that's what the air sound is and uh, if we had to use one word to describe it i think it's it's neon in its own way you know so okay. that's kind of how we would put it that's a cool way to describe <laughs> it. <laughs> i mean i like it it's like it's like a it's like a visual instrument you know yeah. like you have those visuals as well as as those um you know those sonic sounds that you hear so we just wanted to create a world that no one had ever been to before and mm. so when you hear it it's something fresh and it's it's crisp and you're like wow this is so incredible but Refreshing. i can relate yeah. re relate to right. it and we're trying our best at doing that so it's, it's right. we love it yeah and moving into the ep that just dropped on friday yeah, ecliptic yes. um what was the production like for you guys on this one now that this was on a record label and it was going to the masses this time around it was actually insane. I mean, Brandon co-produced co-produced the whole thing, and you know when we got signed, we actually had all of the material. It was it was already written, and th they just kind of helped us expand on it and get the right masters and mm -hmm. mixers. But it was it was great because they didn't want to change anything. Our label was oh. like, we love everything about you. I feel like that's really rare. It, it was, was it was incredible. Yeah. It was like we don't want to change anything about you. We want you to do what you're doing because it's so great, and we want to release you and make you the best you can possibly be but still being you yeah, right. so was that so was cool. that was the best part about i that. remember they were like they were like whatever you guys are doing <laughs> just keep stop. doing it and we're like okay that's that's a, that's great you know we're just being us and and uh and that that was that meant a lot to us because it's like oh yes we're doing it right you know we're doing it right for once and and that made us feel good as the musicians that we are and uh and creatively it's just it's continued to evolve and um, with this EP, we're, we're very, very proud of it. it. It's it's finally out, and you know, it's it's been under our beds for so long. Yeah. And the fact that people can now listen to it and and use it as a soundtrack to their lives and right. put it to memories and and relate to that is just something very surreal yeah. to us. And and all the feedback has been great. And uh, thank you guys for for getting it. Yeah. And uh, we I hope feel you guys like we've been waiting. To enjoy it. We've been waiting for it to come out for yeah. so long. Like we've just been waiting. Like we've yes. been ra waiting to release something. We're like, oh my gosh, we have. We're like crawling out of our skin. No one has heard anything, and we released our record night, and it got an amazing response. And then, following it, we released our EP, and mm -hmm. soon an album. Yeah. Not too soon, but easy. soon. It also makes it easier, like when you're in an Uber car. And you're like on the <laughs> way home, and they're like, "So what do you do?" And we're like, "Oh, we're musicians." Like, "Oh, can we hear anything?" Sorry, nothing's yeah, out that yet. Yeah, that was like that was like <laughs> you know, top like, ten like most exciting parts. Because when we when we were in Ubers before, we'd tell them, and they'd be like, "Oh, can we hear anything?" We're like, "No, it's well, not out." Just like every other musician in LA. Like, <laughs> now we're like, "Yes, go get it! It's well, on like, Spotify and iTunes." It. On Spotify, iTunes, etc. Anyway, yeah. Can, can you guys break down uh, the four tracks uh, for me? Like yes. what? they're really about and what the production was like? I yeah, like um, I think all of them have a kind of running theme of teenagehood and growing older and those mixed feelings you have as you grow up. And mm -hmm. I think we really wanted to make that because even if you've already grown up, you can think back on it. And if you're growing up, you can relate to it. Well, you're always growing up. Yeah, well, you always, I'm saying up, even you know, as right? an older Technology, person, yeah. <laughs> it's never, it's always new. It's always new, but um, so I'll Ecliptic. Oh. I'll recognize first. I'll recognize yes, first. the single okay. is first. <laughs> so with I'll Night, um, we basically wanted to create something that was very fun and very catchy that everybody could sing along to and dance along to, but that also had a deeper meaning to it in the end. And I think with that song, we were trying to create a concept of basically talking about how in this world there are a lot of a lot of things that happen that we wish we could do certain. We wish we could. We wish we could take action on them. Mm -hmm. But in the end, you know, there's only so much we can do in the end. Or I said in the end twice but <laughs> yeah there's only so much we can do and um it's kind of like a positive an anthem basically saying that you know we're all trying our best at the end of the day yeah. and so that's what that song was about 
and then Ecliptic is the second track. Yeah, Ecliptic is... That's like our favorite. I think it's my favorite on the EP. Not the choosing favorites. Song. Obviously, Right Good Night, but um, Ecliptic was a song we wrote kind of about growing older. I mean, as you get up... Actually, growing older and being in the business or being in any type of business, mm -hmm. you're constantly looked at and you're constantly judged, but in, in good ways and bad ways. Yeah. But we just felt as we were growing and as we were a little band in this business that now we're mm -hmm. finally in that glass ceiling yeah, and, we and everyone's spotlight so that our music is now in that position of judgment and it's also in that position of like people could either be super nice or people don't they don't have to be anymore you know because now there is this material out into the world mm -hmm. and yeah. so it was that along with you know growing up and adjusting to a new life and uh, you know yeah. figuring ourselves out and you know our childhood slowly disappearing and yeah, becoming and the adults growing and up in LA and going to these these Hollywood parties, meeting people, seeing things that you've never seen before is, is such a crazy thing as a teenager yeah. and just, just it's so many things, but it's mostly just the, the realization of growing up and no matter if you're in the business or you're not in the business, you're just a teenager going to school, you're constantly looked at and you're yeah, constantly yeah. in that glass ceiling. So just breaking that and being like, whatever, this is who I am, you yeah. know, <laughs> not to sound cheesy. It's the title track too, it's the, it's the title track and so right. we thought it was a perfect way to debut us as, as a new band and as new artists in the business because, you know, it describes that adjusting to that new lifestyle adjusting to that new world of people being able to you know judge and listen and have their opinions on what we've had yeah. you know for so long and cash flow um actually is about um i mean you know everyone let's say you want something mm -hmm. and you're like oh man i really want this item or, or this thing and i really want it really want it really want it and then you finally get it and you want something different mm -hmm. so it's just the constant involvement of wanting things and getting things and money kind of being meaningless in the end of the day because it's always you because you're yeah, constantly want wanting more yeah, yeah. so i think that was kind of the 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 core of that song it was but a concept I, I would say for sure the song was a concept of uh, about you know everybody in this world finds that with materialism you find happiness mm -hmm. and so it was trying to take that concept and find a way to break away by basically saying at the end of the day you're never going to be completely satisfied so why don't we just run away from all of that and just try to find happiness in ourselves and with other people so nice. i think that was the concept of cash flow and lies and lies, yeah. lies is the basically picture your it's one 12 o'clock one o'clock in the morning and yeah. you're leaving this party and you liked someone at the party and that didn't really get a chance to talk to them, but you, you made the eye contact you. and you, yeah. re you realize actually it's not good for you. But it's basically a nighttime driving time car and car <laughs> nighttime car driving song. Yes, like absolutely. you're leaving a party, you're driving, you're you're just your mind is kind of spacey and mm -hmm. you're thinking about the things that could happen with this person, but you know that they're wrong and. Okay. I don't know. It's just yeah. yeah. We got a really cool response from 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 somebody on Twitter, and uh, you know we asked people's opinions. We're like, what do you guys feel like our EP sounds like? You know, what are your favorite parts on it? How would you describe it? And we got we got a, a word of response. Basically, somebody said it reminds them of being on a neon electric island, where like oh. the existence and like the atmosphere <laughs> is what you see in the EP cover, which is what we wanted to create, is that world that when you listen, you go into that world. And so when we read that, like a neon electric carnival on an <laughs> island, like we were like, that is so it, you know, because we wanted to create our own atmosphere and our yeah. own aesthetic that when people listen, they go there. So we hope that everybody who's listening uh, kind of goes to that place and, and makes it yeah. makes it their own happiness and, and finds their That's own, cool. uh, you know, finds their own feelings with it that's important to us and that's we cool. wanted to leave that openness as well so that people's creative minds could kind of yeah. create their own visions to it so right. and now that it's out you guys can now officially tour the world with it right yes yeah, <laughs> so, so aside, it. aside from september 10th at in chicago and september 11th in new york what else do you guys have planned out do you guys have any tour plans um we we have something um in the works in october Okay. in san francisco nice. yes i don't know i don't know how much i can say about it but that that's most likely going to happen so Absolutely. we have a lot of tour plans for the fall um we hope to be touring and uh and and promoting our ep and uh reaching people that we haven't reached before so that they can go to that neon carnival island as well <laughs> and uh you yeah. know we have a, a lot of big plans and we're so excited to to have our wishbone clan our fan base and uh, all our friends and family and, and everybody around us supporting us and uh, enjoying the music that we create. And uh, we just can't wait to share the rest with you guys very soon. So it's going to be an exciting journey. And uh, we're stoked. So.